Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are on page number page number 72. Please turn to page number 72. Today is our lesson number 115 and today we'll continue what we started yesterday which is to solve one variable equations. We're going to begin with practice problems number 5. We did 1 through 4 yesterday. We're going to pick up from number 5. Let's take a look at number 5. Number 5 is a strange question. It says given the equation that it is, let's put down the equation first, given this equation 2x minus 3 equals 5x plus 4. It says which one, which one of them, which of the, which of the following is an acceptable first step? Which of the following is an acceptable first step? What the hell do you suppose they meant by that? Let's find out, shall we? Which one of the? I'm gonna let me re, let me read it verbatim. See what they exactly say here. Given the equation 2x minus 3 equals 5x plus 4, which of the following is an acceptable first step toward solving the equation? Well, yeah. Which of the following is the acceptable first step? Let's find out why the other three answer choices that they're claiming are wrong would qualify as quote unquote unacceptable. Shall we? Let's begin. In the in answer, in answer choice A, it says subtract 3 from both sides. A says so we have 2x minus 3 equals 5x plus 4. And it says subtract 3 from both sides, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. If we subtract 3 from both sides, what do you suppose is going to happen? Because the idea when we're solving an equation for an unknown, unknown quantity, one variable equation we're talking about, our job, our goal, our ultimate aim is to get all the unknown quantities on one side of the equation traditionally the left hand side and all the known quantities on the right hand side of the equation. Get all the unknowns on one side and all the, all the knowns on the, on, on the other side. If you were to subtract 3 from both sides, let's see what it takes us. So what will end up is 2x minus 6 equals 5x plus 1. It doesn't take us anywhere. It doesn't get us anywhere. It does not, it does not does not get us anywhere. It was a dead end. What are you going to do with it? That was a waste of time. That doesn't. That really didn't achieve anything. That really didn't achieve anything. Now we are left with. We wanted to get rid of three, either from here, bring it there, or get rid of five x, or do something. We have not done anything. This equation is basically we have a number on the bar, on this side which we have here. We have unknown quantity which we have here. We have unknown quantity which we have here. We have unknown. We have not done anything. That is not an acceptable step. It's just a waste of time. Mathematically, it's not wrong. This quantity, this equation is a true equation. It's the same equation as that one, but it really didn't achieve anything, which is what they mean by the first acceptable mistake. A first acceptable step. The step has to be of such a nature that it achieves something. Let's look at answer choice B. In answer choice B, it says add 4 to both sides. Add 4 to both sides. Let's add 4 to both sides, see what we get end up here. Is that going to get us anywhere? Well, if we add 4 to both sides, 2x is going to come down, negative 3 and a positive 4 is going to give us positive 1, and positive 4 and positive 4 is going to give us negative 8. Again, it's a dead end. It doesn't get us anywhere. It does not achieve anything at all. Let's look at answer choice D. Answer choice D. I wonder what the right answer is, don't you? Answer choice D says add 5x to both sides. It says add 5x to both sides. So here's our 5x, here's our 5x. We're going to add 5x to both sides. This was, plus, this was positive to begin with. We're adding 5x. And what do you suppose is going to happen? If we add 5x to both sides, 2x plus 5x is 7x. Negative 3 is going to come down. 
5x plus 5 is 10x and the negative 4 is going to come down. What did we achieve? The answer is absolutely nothing. Zilch. Nada. Nothing at all. It was a waste of time. One more time. It doesn't get us anywhere. This is a dead end. Let's look at C. Let's look at answer choice C. And not only will we see that it is in fact an acceptable first step, but we're going to go one step further. We're going to actually solve the bloody thing. We're going to actually solve the equation. We're going to find the value of x. We're going to verify it. Even the book does not ask us to solve the equation. The book simply asks us, the textbook simply asks us, what's the first acceptable mistake? We're going to actually solve the whole bloody thing. As I told you, let's get going. So let's write the equation that is given to us and let's see what happens in C. The equation was, the equation was, Two x minus three equals five x plus four. Five x plus four. And what does answer choice C actually says? C says, C says, subtract two x from both sides. It says subtract two x from both sides. Of course, we're going to have to subtract from both sides. We cannot just subtract something from one side. So we have 2x minus 3 equals 5x plus 4. And we're going to do exactly what they tell us we should do. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides. So no, remember this 2x has a positive sign. This 5x has a positive sign. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides. And let's see if that gets us anywhere. Shall we? We have to achieve something in the first step. So if we subtract 2x from both sides, are we able to move some things around? Are we, able, are, we, are we able to move either the unknown quantity to one side or a known quantity to the other side? We have to achieve one or the other. Either we have to be able to bring all the unknown to one side or all the known quantities to the other side on the first step. As a matter of fact, we'll, we'll do the quote-unquote first and the second step together. But that's the first step right here. So if we, if you were to subtract 2x from both sides, this negative 2x and a positive 2x is going to cancel out. You see, we did achieve something. We're left with negative 3 equals, we have positive 5x and negative 2x. We're going to end up with positive 3x plus 4. What's the second step? The second step is going to be, the second step is going to be, we need to bring 4 to this side. Let's subtract 4 from both sides. So second step is, subtract 4 from both sides. If we subtract 4 from both sides, this positive 4 and a negative 4, they're going to cancel out. And a negative 3 and a negative 4 is going to give us negative 7 equals 3x. We don't, we don't want the value of 3x, we want 1x by itself. Let's divide both sides by 3. And this 3 cancels out and what we find is that x equals negative 7 third. x equals negative 7 third. Well, that's not, the, that's not the whole story here. We need to verify it now, which is exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to verify it. We need room for the verification. Just give me one brief second. Let's verify, shall we? Remember, on the on the left hand side we had 2x minus 3 and we are claiming x is negative 2 thirds. So it's 2 times negative, not negative 2 thirds, negative 7 thirds minus 3. This is the left hand side. On the right hand side we had 5x plus 4. 5 and we are claiming that x is negative 7 thirds plus 4. Watch what happens, okay? Watch what happens. Can we write this this negative 3 that we have here, 2x, 2x minus 3, can we write that as negative 9 thirds? Sure, why not? Negative 9 thirds is same as 3. Negative 9 thirds is same as negative 3. Now we have a denominator of 3 here, a denominator of 3 here. We want the same denominator if we're, if we're going to add these two figures. Same thing here. Here we have a denominator of 3. But here we have, we have a denominator of 1. That's no good. We want a denominator of 3. Can we write our 4? Can we write this 4 as 12 over 3? Yes, 12 divided by 3 is indeed 4. So that's it. Now we can add them. And if we, if we add them, these two quantities better equal each other at the end. Because if they don't, something has gone wrong. Let's see what happens. So here we end up with... 2 times negative 7, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14 thirds and a negative 9 thirds. 
negative 14 and 14 and 9, 14 plus 9, 14 plus 10 would have been 24, so it's going to be 23. So negative 23 thirds, negative 23 thirds. Let's see what we get there. Here we have 5 times negative 7 is negative 35 thirds plus a positive 12 thirds. And what do you suppose, what do you suppose negative 35 and a positive 12 is going to be? Negative 12 and positive 12, negative 35 and positive 12 is going to be negative 23 thirds. Voila, it checks out. Our answer, our answer was correct. X is indeed, X is indeed equal to negative 7 third. That answer was correct. As I said, it was not required. The book does not ask for it. We just did it because it was barrels of fun. As a matter of fact, it was so much fun that we're going to do two more. Okay. Either it is fun or we are bored into masochism. Just one more. Number six. Now, and I'll tell you where number six came from. If you look at the book, the very first problem was the very first one, x plus seven. No, number two. If you look at the book, in question number two, it says x plus seven equals negative 3x. You see that? Number 2. Take a look at the book here. Now question number 2 it says x plus 7 equals negative 3x. That same question is going to be our question number 6. What happened is that the first time when I solved it, the first time I solved it, I missed the negative sign. I, I just simply didn't read it. I missed it and I solved it based on that. I got my answer. I verified my answer in the equation. The answer was in fact correct based on that equation. Based on this equation, the answer that I got for, through the solution, when I put back that value in this equation, it does, it did work because this was the equation I was using. It's just a good thing. It's, a, it's just a pure coincidence that I happened to check. I happened to decide to, I, I to decide to check the answer. It's in the back. In the book, they give you answer choices. The answer choices are on page number. The answers are on page 82. Answers are on page, page 82. So when I check my answers in the back, the answers did not match. Let's see what's going on, shall we? But as I said, based on the work that we're going to do, when we find our answer, when we plug that value in this equation, which is a different equation than the one that they give, it would, it will work because the solution was not wrong. It's just that the equation that I was working with was wrong. That this is not the equation that's in the book. Let's solve it. Enough to talk. Let's bring x to this side. This is plus x. Let's subtract x from both sides. And if you do that, this positive and negative is going to cancel out, and we can end up with positive 3x and a negative x is going to give us 2x equals 7. 2x equals 7. We don't want the value of 2x, we want the value of 1x. Let's divide both sides by 2. And in that case, x equals 2, this 2 is going to cancel out, and x is equal to 7 halves. Now why did I put x on this side even though it shows up here? It's just a tradition. The tradition dictates that you put your unknown quantities on the left hand side. It is just a tradition. It's just a convention. No big deal. We, we could have written it like this. That We could have written like this. But what, what we have to understand is that it is not 7 half that equals x. It is the x that equals 7 half. It makes no sense to proudly go around telling, proudly go around telling that 3 equals y. It is not the 3 that equals the y. It's just, it's just that you were solving for y and you found out that y equals 3. So because we read from left to right, the tradition is that you always put your unknown on the left hand side because you're going to read that first. It is the y that equals 3. It is not the 3 that equals y. 3 is 3. 3 always remains 3. 3 does not change, which is why we, don't not, we do not call 3 a variable. Y is a variable because it varies depending on the context, depending on the problem. The value of the unknown quantity will change from problem to problem. 3 is called constant. Most likely, it is called constant because it remains constant. So it is not the 3 that equals Y. 3 is always 3. It never changes. It is the Y that equals 3. So tradition dictates that we put our unknown on, on the left hand side because we read from left to right x equals 7 halves. Let's verify, shall we? Enough of the talk. Let's verify it. What should we verify? We can verify it here if you like. We have x which is 7 half 
plus 7, which we can write that, write that as 14 halves. Why 14 halves? Because 14 divided by 2 is 7. Because I don't have the root to do two more steps, I'm doing everything in one step. But on this side, we have 3 times 7 halves. Well, 3 times 7 halves, 3 times 7 is 21. So in this side, we get 21 halves. Let's see what we get on this side. Oh, there we go. 7 plus 14 is indeed 21 halves. So it checks out. The answer is correct. x does equal 7 halves if x plus 7 equals positive 3x. So this answer is correct for this equation, but that, that was not the equation in the book. So that was our problem number 6. That was a bonus problem. It came out of nowhere. Let's do one more, shall we? One last one. This is the next problem that we're going to do is the exact same problem that appeared in the 5th edition. I'm going to give you where it appeared and so forth. We're going to do it on the blackboard. As I, or perhaps I did not say it, perhaps I don't, I don't remember whether I said it or not, so I'm going to do it right now. This, this book that I'm holding in my hand is the fifth edition, the previous edition of the T's study manual. We have already solved every single problem that appears in the fifth edition. You will find the solutions to all the problems that appear in the fifth edition from day number 1 through 80. The T's fifth edition, day 1 through 80. This particular concept solving one variable equations, these problems we will be solved on day number 53, 54, and 55. So if you want additional practice, just type in T's day 53 or 54 or 55 and get, get some more practice. In addition to that, there is one more source that you can avail yourself, uh, yourselves, which is the basic math series. Type in basic math, day 14, day 29, and day 67 were three videos where you will find even more practice problems. Enough of that. Let's do problem number seven, which happens to be from the fifth edition. It appeared on page number 107 in, in the fifth edition of T's. And the problem was 3 times 4p minus 1 equals 16p plus 5. So if you can do it yourself, why not? Try it yourself, see what happens. I'll give you 5 seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself, see what happens. Let's see what we can do. So first thing we need to do is open this parenthesis. 3 times 4 is 12, so we have 12p. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, which has to equal 16p plus 5. Now, listen very carefully. If we were to bring the 16p on this side, by the time it comes on this side, it will become negative. The only way we can bring the 16p to this side is to subtract 16p from both sides. Listen very carefully. If you were to subtract 16p from both sides, this 16p will appear on this side, but it will appear as a negative 16p. And since 16 is bigger than 13, it will end up in a negative coefficient of p. I don't like having negative coefficient for the unknown quantity. It's always a good idea to leave the unknown quantity with a positive coefficient. So instead of moving 16p to this side, we're going to move 6, 12p to that side. This 12p is a positive 12p. We're going to subtract it so that we can bring it on this side. You see? The positive 12p when it appears, when you move it, when we say move it to the other side, when we move it, it appears as a negative. Whatever the sign is, it becomes positive, opposite sign. And so we have brought the p here, let's bring the 5 here. Subtract 5 from both sides. There we go. Watch what happens now. Most people like to do these two things in two separate steps. I prefer to do them in one step. If you prefer to do them in two separate steps, that's fine. Move the p's around first and then move the numbers constant. So we have positive 12 and negative 12p, which was the whole point all along, obviously. And we have a negative 3 and a negative 5, which is going to give us negative 8. Let's see what happens here. And we have positive 5 and a negative 5, they're going to cancel out. We have positive 16 and negative 12, it's going to give us positive 4. Positive 4p. Let's see what happens next. So, let me rewrite the way I want the, that looks better. So, 4p equals negative 8. That's what we are saying. 4p equals negative 8. Let's divide both sides by 4. If we divide both sides by 4, first we need to bring this equal sign down a little bit. This 4 is going to drop out here. That was the whole point. 
and P equals negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2, which is negative 2. The very last thing we need to do is to verify, make sure our answer is correct. We're going to do the verification on the top here. We're going to do the verification on the top. It says 3 times 4P, 4P, which is negative 2, minus 1, minus 1. Notice how I changed the shape of the parentheses, it's okay, because now it's better to have two of them, because you want to keep your, you want to keep your 4P, 4P separate, 4, and P is negative, is, is negative 2, so I put the parentheses around it so we can see it. That's your 4P minus 1, 4P minus 1, outside we have 3. And on this side we have 16P, 16P, which we are claiming to be negative 2, plus 5, plus 5. And if our answer is correct, if our answer is indeed correct, then the better these two quantities, the left-hand quantity and the right-hand quantity, the better equate each other, the better equ they better be equal to each other, the better equate each other because it is an equation. Let's see what we let's, let's see what we have. We need the room. I'm gonna have to raise some things. Three times four times negative two is negative eight and negative one. And here we have 16 times negative 2 is negative 32 and positive 5. Negative 8 and negative 1 is negative 9, so we have 3 times negative 9. Negative 32 and a positive 5 is negative 27. And what do you suppose 3 times negative 9 is? Of course, 3 times negative 9 is negative 27, and therefore negative 27 does indeed equal negative 2 27 these two quantities are equal to each other, our answer is indeed correct. And this question is the exact same question that appeared, as I said, on page number 107 in the 5th edition. Page 107 in the 5th edition. Which we did, I don't remember which day which we did this particular problem, but it must have been either day 53, 54 or 55. I know.